Okay, so now that we've gone over um, rendering a volume, the next step in the process will be, uh, or I guess the next step in our videos will be to go over ISO surfaces, which show um, the value of a variable at a single point in its entire distribution. So I'm going to start over from scratch and reload my data. Uh, I've just opened Vapor, and so I'm going to go over two tabs over to my ISO tab, short for ISO surface, and then once again load my data through data, import data into current session, and WORF ARW. Navigate over to my data directory and select my WORF files. And there's our scene again. So, like last time, I'm going to stretch my Z axis under Edit, Visualizer Features, and I'm going to apply a stretch factor of 50. A little more than last time. I think on the volume we did 25. This time I want to do 50 because uh, I think it um, illustrates, illustrates the ISO surface a little bit better. So to enable our ISO surface, we're going to go over here to our ISO surface instance. And to enable it, we click the checkbox. And there is our first ISO surface a little uh, representation of our elevation variable like we saw last time. This is one vertical slice of elevation. So to change our variable, look at something more interesting. I think this time I'm going to pick temperature. So scroll down to my T. And here's a meager ISO surface of our temperature. So let's, uh, let's see if we can make it a little bit nicer. Um, on our transfer function down here, we can see the histogram domain bounds going from minus 1 to 1. And we also see our data bounds going from about minus 3 to about 200. So we're looking at maybe 1% of our entire data set because our histo domain bounds are, uh, I guess, constrained to that one slice around 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 4. Uh, my minimum histogram domain bound and my maximum to 200 so we can look at the entire span of the data. Uh, to put that change into effect I have to click on this hit uh, fit to view button and then histo. So now we see our temperature distribution within the entire domain region. Um, so how our ISO surface works is that you can see in our transfer function we have a white line that's isolating a single data value. Right now our ISO surface value is designated as zero. And in order to change that, we can grab these little red arrows here at the bottom and drag them to the right. And I'm going to try to hit that peak right there so we can see the most populous uh, value in our temperature variable. And that's at about four degrees down near the surface. Um, and we can drag it around to see you know, the maximum value at 180 degrees. And that's up here at the top. Um, I did some playing with this before. And I liked the value 55.73. So if you know the value that you want to look at, instead of dragging that white bar around, you can type it in. I'm going to type in 55.73 into my ISO surface value, hit enter, and we have a new rendering of our variable at this point. You can kind of see the eye of the hurricane dipping down in temperature right in there. And you can look at it from the bottom too. It looks kind of like an upside down mountain. And that's pretty much it for the ISO surface. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there are other things you can do with it, however. Uh, I think I mentioned in the intro video that you can apply a color to it, which I think has a really nice effect. Um, the color can be applied based on another variable. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm up here at the top of the ISO surface panel. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom into ISO surface appearance settings. Uh, under the mapped variable field, I'm going to pick a variable. Uh, right now I'm looking at temperature. I'm going to map it 
based on uh, pressure. And so now we can see how pressure is being mapped to our ISO surface with another transfer function down here. Um, most of the values being allocated to blue and purple hues. So if I want a more of a spectrum of color being applied to my ISO surface, I can come up here and click on this red arrow, drag it over to where my values are in the histogram, and it will squish these colors in so they get mapped uh, to the pressure values that actually are present.